Here's another quick video on the bare basics of what you must know for a medical coding certification exam. You need to know your book and um, particular for the CPT book, the very first thing you should know is your cover page here. This thick cover has a list of cheat sheet little modifiers here. This is super handy dandy so you're not having to turn to the back of the book in the appendix to look for your modifiers in CPT. Now one thing to note is that this is not all modifiers. These are only modifiers that are applicable to the CPT book. For a full list of modifiers, let me see if I can figure out how to pause this. You need to be in your HitPix book. It has a complete list of every single modifier in it that is available for medical coding. And it's a huge publication. It's a lot. They go from AA all the way to ZZ practically. I mean, there's a bunch of them. So it's over like 150 pages in this book. Um, and they have long, lengthy um, descriptors and be sure and peruse these because there's a huge list, huge list and all your modifiers are located in your HitPix book. And by the way, if you are taking the AAPC CPC exam, you are at a disadvantage if you do not get their HitPix book. Number one tip right there. So be sure and familiarize yourself with these and be able to turn to this page every time you have a question with a modifier to double check your uh, descriptor so that you do not have to go all the way back to the back of the book and read the other page, which can be pretty confusing. You need to know this third page in the CPT book. You need to know your place of service and where to find it. These numbers are important for one particular question that might be on the medical coding exam, so be sure you know where to find this page and what it would be called, place of service for coding. You need to be able to find out, you know, like if you're billing for an office visit, your place of service code is 11. This is where your doctor is when they see you. So this is super handy dandy to know. Be sure you know where it is in your book. Next very beginning thing that you should know where it is, is this page that has your code sets. It does list out every set of codes when the codes are released and when they become in an effect. You need to be sure and know where this page is at so you can get to it quickly for your answer. Which is usually if you get the question, it'll just be one question about this particular item. The instructions on how to use your CPT book. Don't overlook this. It's a good read. Be sure and read this and learn your relationship between what I call your mama code and your child code. That is very important. It's the whole key thing to what is um, part of some other companies, um, integral part of what they train you to do when they're training you how to prepare for your medical coding exam. This is one of their key factors. Knowing what comes after the modify or the semicolon in the mother code and what that means compared to what is going on in your child code, that is super important. Be sure you know that. The next thing you might get asked on the CPC exam is a question about Category 1 codes or Category 2 codes. Be sure you know where these bullet points are and when you're asked which one is or isn't part of Category 1 or Category 2 codes, you'll be able to turn to this page and find the one that is in that list of answers or which one is not on that list of answers. Super important to know where that is. Next page, the difference between add-on codes and modifiers. And the specific points that you need to know about modifiers is right here in these bullet points. There's a question usually on the medical coding exam about which one is or isn't and they combine both add-on and modifiers and when you find one of the things that is listed that is not 
and it's usually underneath what is an add-on code, then you know that's the particular answer. I know that sounds really crazy and confusing. Be sure you know where this paragraph is and these bullet points are for your exam. That's the key point. Symbols. You might get asked what a symbol means. Be sure and know this paragraph. Know what the symbols mean or at least be able to turn to this page and have them underline as red is just this, your pyramid is just this, what does this mean, what does that mean. Very important to know those differences. Usually there's a question about lightning bolt and this not included in modifier 51 um, symbol. Those two symbols you will end up with a, a weird little range of codes like even from 1000 codes to cardiology to even medicine codes. Just a gamut of codes and they'll ask you what do these codes have in common? Usually you'll find that symbol in front of each one or this symbol in front of each one and you just have to pick out the right answer. I'm still on these beginner pages before we even get to E&M, so don't neglect these two pages. They do usually ask you a vocabulary term from these pages. They like that word. They like hypo or hyper or try to confuse you or ISO. They like all the O's here try to confuse you on these. Right here they like the IPSI and right here they like lateral. Be sure you know where these pages are and don't forget about them during your exam that you can come look up some root words or prefixes or suffixes right here. And lastly, don't forget about this page because this is important for things like muscular skeletal section and for radiology. Do you know that the anterior aspect means chest? Do you know that the posterior aspect means back? So those are important. Be sure you know where this page is at so that you can find it during the middle of your exam in case you get stomped on a route for a particular instrument or laparoscopy and you need to know and all they've told you is its anterior aspect of a trunk and that means chest. And that posterior aspect means of a trunk means back. So important to know. Anyway, I hope these first few pages overview is super helpful for you guys. Um, you can always make notes anywhere. There's a white available space. Just don't write over the top of their print. And if you do make a mistake, you can white out your own mistake and then right over the top of it, but um, don't white out anything that is printed and typed. This advice is um, and should be super helpful, I hope, and should get you through some of the minor questions at the beginning of the exam or throughout it that are a little strange and a little out there that aren't tied directly to a CPT code or an ICD-10 code or a HIPPIX code that might be a little vague for you guys and not remember, oh yeah, that stuff's up in the front of the book. So I hope this is helpful. See y'all later.